I was in the middle of making another video when my doorbell rang and I was delivered a package from China. I'm pretty much well not getting any packages from the US, but I guess I'm getting packages pretty quickly from China because what was in the box was the Pen BBS 355, the improved version. I was shocked because I literally ordered it just last week. I don't own nor have I ever tried the original 355, but everybody seems so excited about this new improved one, I decided to get one. The filling system is called a bulk filler, and we'll go through that, but let's go ahead and get on with the review. The box comes in the standard pen BBS white sleeve with 355 on it. I got the Misty Mountain, and then the box is its standard black box with pen BBS on the top. Inside, there's an instruction card that says 355 Instructions Improved Version in both English and Chinese. And as I said, this is the Misty Mountains color. There is no other paperwork or anything else in the box. The pen is a clear acrylic with dark and light blue swirls. There's silver hardware and then the typical pen BBS sword-like clip. Pen BBS is printed on the front of the center band and 355 on the back side of the band. The pen uncaps right at two complete turns. I think the best looking part is the top of the cap and at the end cap because they're both like solid pieces of acrylic and they look really nice. There is no inner sleeve but instead there's a step inside of the cap in which the end of the section is screwed up against which keeps the ink moist in your nib. It makes for a nice clean look. This nib is a silver and gold fine point and I don't think it looks good with the silver hardware so I'm going to change it out later. Here it is compared to the Pen BBS 492. They're exactly the same height except for just a little bit at the top. They both have the same clip and feel about the same, except for the top is a little more conical looking on the 355. For those of you that already have an older 355, this new improved version does not have a longer cap. There isn't room on the inside to put a longer nib in. As you can see when you put the cap on, the end of the nib ends up right at the top of the cap. Uncapped, they look and feel similar except for the section on the 492 is a little bit concave. The 492 is in the nib unit and the 355 is just friction fit into the section. Here it is compared to a Platinum 3776 and it's significantly longer, especially when uncapped. It's due mainly because of the blind cap on the 355. Okay, let's take this pen apart. The section comes off easily. There's the O-ring and there's the part where the end of that rod there will seal up that part in the section. Here's the pen assembled and you can see that little metal circular thing up against the acrylic right to the right of the pen BBS center band. Here I'm unscrewing the end cap so that I can pull that metal rod up to the end to engage the piston. Then I'm continuing to rotate the end cap toward me till the little knob gets screwed into the piston. Once the end of that rod is screwed into the piston, they're now engaged and you can push it forward and use the piston to fill the pen. Once you've filled the pen and the piston is in the top of the barrel, then you need to turn the blind cap away from you to disengage that rod from the piston so that you can push the rod back in. Here I'm checking to make sure that the little end is being unscrewed from the piston and then you push forward and push it in and then continue turning in the same direction to close the end cap. Pushing that rod forward will displace some ink and they tell you to be careful because some ink will come out of the nib. 
there's enough ink in the feed that you can jot a few notes, but if you're going to have a longer writing session, you'll need to unscrew the end cap just a bit to get the end of the rod to come away from the section. Okay, to further take it apart, at the end here there's two flat spots. And notice that it's made out of aluminum or some sort of lightweight metal. I tried using the Twisby wrench, but it's a little bit too small. Then I tried using this adjustable wrench, but the metal was just a little bit too sensitive and it looked like it was going to start tearing it apart. The one quarter side of this wrench was too small, but the 5 16th side worked fine. And all you need to do is just give it a gentle nudge and that's it. And then you can just unscrew it with your fingers and pull it out. After you disassemble it a few times, this metal piece will come off so you need to keep track of it and not lose it. Also in the old model, the rod inside the end cap I think occasionally broke off and then would just spin around and around. They fixed this by having this metal crossbar go through the end cap. It looks pretty cool. You can see the flat spot on the threads on the unit as it rotates away from my thumb. Here's the pen disassembled, the nib, the section, the feed, and then the barrel. And the filling unit with the end cap and the new metal section that engages the piston. And then the cap. You can probably further disassemble the filling section, but I'd like to be able to have a working pen for this review. Here's a close-up of that filling unit, and you can see the little metal buttons will be able to slot inside that threaded piece. Now remember, the threaded metal piece is screwed into the end of your barrel, so those little metal buttons can slot right into it as you turn the end cap. And that metal piece holds the piston so you can push the rod forward. Then when you pull the rod back and turn, that little piece on the end screws back into the piston so that you can re-engage the piston. Okay, I'm going to reassemble it. It's easier if you just go ahead and engage that metal piece all the way up to the bottom and then push it into the barrel. Then slide that rod in just a little bit and then finger tighten that threaded piece into the barrel. As I said, I wanted to change out that nib for a completely silver nib that's also from Pen BBS. You can get this for like $5 on um, Etsy. The fins on Pen BBS feeds are really thin, so you need to be careful when you pull it out of the section. The feeds appear to be identical. And then I'm just going to push this medium silver nib back into the section. At first I didn't seat the nib very well and I had to go back and reseat it because I couldn't close the cap since it's still the same kind of shortish cap. I'm going to practice first on some cleaning fluid. So I'm unscrewing the end cap and then pulling the piston up and then the cleaning fluid is being drawn up into the pen. The piston is drawn all the way back and the rod is sticking out of the back end of the pen. After twisting the knob and disengaging the rod, you're going to need to push the rod forward which will displace some ink. So I want to see how much liquid comes out. So I'm pushing it forward and it doesn't seem like a lot is coming out. I've got the rod all the way forward and it looks like it was a few drops that didn't make it all the way through a double folded paper towel. Okay, let's take it through an inking. I figure it's Pen BBS pen, so we'll use a Pen BBS ink. This one is called Sakura Flower, but it's kind of an olive green. It has an interesting cap with some sort of design on the top. Okay, the pen is in the ink and the piston is engaged at the bottom of the barrel and you need to pull it up nice and smooth. If you do it really fast, you kind of develop a little bit of an air cushion and it kind of bounces off the top of the barrel. 
Okay, that's a nice fill and I measured it and it's about two milliliters, not counting what's in the feed in section. Okay, now you turn clockwise on the end cap so that you disengage the end of the rod from the piston and then slowly push it forward. I want to see how much ink that rod displaces. One, two, three, four, and five, and the rod's all the way in. So with five drops of ink, you may want to hold the pen back over your ink bottle as you push the rod back in. You need to remember when you're writing with the pen to slightly unscrew that end cap so that the little rubber end of that rod comes away from the section and unplugs it. That may be a pain, but the upside of that is when you have the end cap completely closed, it completely seals off that big old barrel of ink from your feed. So if you have a leak through your nib, it's only going to be just the ink that's in the feed and not that whole two milliliters that's in the barrel. Here's the pen unposted. And the pen posted. It posts pretty securely if you pretty much will cram that cap on there. I'm not sure I'd want to post it for long writing sessions as you have to unscrew that end cap and I'm afraid that it might somehow move it. The pen writes nice and smooth even though I did change out the nib. It writes pretty much well like every other pen BBS nib. And this uh, medium nib has a really good flow. It looks like this ink might have some really interesting shading. And it pretty much well keeps up with anything I do. I was pretty much well interested in the filling system and the nibs on pen BBS pens all write pretty nice. They can be fiddly at times, so I suggest you get the parts package if you can. At $37, this pen is a good value and a lot of fun. I think this pen is going to keep me entertained this weekend. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. I post every Friday night, Tokyo time. Thank you.